This week on the Computer Chronicles, using your PC to stay healthy. We'll show you two great multimedia medical reference CD-ROMs. We'll visit Stanford University to see how PCs are helping doctors spend more time with their patients. We'll show you a nifty software program that helps prevent carpal tunnel syndrome, and you'll find out how to use your PC to monitor your blood pressure. Internet tips, this week's computer news, and my pick of the week, all coming up next on The Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Acer America, proud supporters of intelligent programming, computer or otherwise. The Computer Chronicles is also made possible by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Medicare, Medicaid, HMOs, these terms have all become the currency of our discussion on what to do about the escalating costs of health care. One of the usual culprits in the debate is technology and its high cost. But there is one piece of technology that's probably keeping the cost of health care down, and that's the PC. Whether through new multimedia software or online forums and news groups, many of us are finding low-cost solutions to routine medical problems. One good example is the new Doctor's Book of Home Remedies from Compton's New Media. Connie, that's yours, so yes, let's sir. talk about it. Yes. Uh, first of all, it talks about home remedies, so I assume the point here is that there are routine medical problems that we can take care of at home and not have to go to the doctor and spend the money doing that. Exactly, like asthma, backaches, colds. Okay, now first of all show me the interface because it's done kind of nicely on this software. Yes, uh, the program is very easy to use. Uh, we have the path bar here and it lists several features. The main menu uh, breaks the book into six, the program into six mm -hmm. different books. The user can explore the doctor's book, the multimedia, allows the user to view any multimedia video pictures. Video and audio stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the topic tree. Uh, Just a way to search for stuff. Exactly. It ranges into su topics and subtopics. Uh -huh. Okay, now l let me ask you to go through a scenario on using this. Suppose I have the software and my kid's having trouble breathing and I'm thinking, well, maybe it's asthma. So can I go into the program and say, is it asthma? What is asthma? What do I do? That kind of stuff? Yes. By clicking on idea search, you can type in your particular subject uh, that you're interested in. Okay, so we'd search for everything the program has dealing with asthma. Exactly. If I click okay. and type in asthma here and click on search. So it's going to look through all six of those categories you showed me on the main menu. Exactly. And everything that is in the doctor's book will appear here. Okay, so this is all stuff on asthma. All right, so first of all, I want just a little bit of background to understand mm -hmm. the problem. So what would I do? By clicking Understanding Asthma, there's a video will appear. Mm -hmm. And this is asthma. We have to understand how our lungs normally work. Our lungs have two basic functions. They pass oxygen so from the air So I get my basic background here on why someone would get asthma. And they remove All right, next thing I want is a home remedy. How do, how do I get to that part? Okay. Um, the home remedy, if I would click on Asthma, 20 ways to stop an attack. Okay. If I double click. Uh, that information will appear here. So this would be some specific advice on what to do to prevent an asthma yes. attack, like, mm -hmm. let's see, stay out of smoke-filled rooms, don't light a fire, that seems good. I'll take an antacid at bedtime, that's an interesting one. Stay out of the, the deep freeze, mm -hmm. so don't get in real cold weather, buy a scarf. Okay, well, they're mm -hmm. practical. Go to, don't go to Arizona <laughs> for relief, okay. <laughs> All right, now there are some medical problems in which I should be going to a doctor, and I saw you had a medical alert section, so mm -hmm. show yes. me how to find information that says, well, this is not something you should treat yourself at home. Okay, asthma medical alert section. By clicking uh, the information and you uh, describe so it says, take this symptoms. stuff seriously, and then at the bottom there it says, if you have breathing problems, this is not to be taken lightly, exactly. and maybe you should go to a doctor. Yes. Okay, that's home remedies. Well, Thanks thank very you. much. All right, with the push on to control medical costs, we don't want a doctor spending a lot of time doing paperwork. We want to maximize time with the patients. At the Stanford University Pain Center in Palo Alto, California, they're using a new PC-based network to do just that. Medicine has progressed greatly in the last centuries, but the physician's role has always included a certain routine, examination, diagnosis, and prescribing treatment. Documenting these events, even today, is usually done with pen and paper. 
Stanford University's pain management clinic is now using a portable wireless PC to keep medical data in one place accessible to everyone. We initially started this project out looking for a way to capture good quality information about patients. What we recognized is that the best person to provide that information in the healthcare environment was a physician. But we had an obstacle, and that was getting the physician to use the computer. To overcome a doctor's reluctance to replace PIN with PC, Stanford asked Digital Medical Systems of San Francisco to create a PIN-based application that could be operated without keyboard or mouse. The medical digital assistant uses entry forms familiar to any MD. The applications are installed on a Toshiba portable with only a touch screen for input. The unit sends and receives data wirelessly through a Windows NT network server. In the old systems where we had just analogs, where we were dealing with pen and paper, what would happen is if there was any deviation from the norm, and in fact almost every case was a deviation from the norm, there were multiple phone calls. My pager was going off all the time related to trying to exchange information about what was happening with the patients. And what this has done is been able to have people go to a different source to look for current information and they get satisfied with the fact that the information is as current as maybe 30 minutes ago. The Stanford Clinic has collected information on over 2,000 patients based on real clinical data and archived for future reference. Dr. Bros foresees a time when hospitals across the country could collect and share a wealth of data that is easy to enter and easy to retrieve. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Now, the best way to save on medical costs is not to get sick, but that means living a healthy lifestyle. Well, computers can help there, too, with software like the program we're about to look at called the Multimedia Workout. All right, Bud, you're not from the software company. You're just a guy who cares about your health, and you're a runner, in fact, right? Correct, so yes. So you're interested in this kind of oh, stuff. Oh, definitely, So that's yes. what we're going to talk right, about. Yes. All right, with this Multimedia Workout, I guess the first thing you do is you have to tell the software who you are so Correct. it knows what the plan's for. Right. Where you are. We should go into the personal profile first. List your name, as you can see here, gender, your age, height, weight. This will help you determine the daily intake of calories. And also, you can note your activity le level, whether it be moderate, vigorous, or whichever you prefer. So the software has yeah. some intelligence in there. Once it knows who you are, it can plan the, the activity programs. For yes. Take it. All right, there's two things to being healthy, right? That's exercise and diet. So yes. let's talk about exercise first. And we, we all want to, as we get older, keep our stomachs mm -hmm. flat and, and do the abdominal exercises. Suppose I wanted to go into the program now and say, what do you recommend I do to do stomach exercises that will be good for me and not strain me and so on? Well, Stuart, we will go to the uh, muscle database. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you Mr. Muscle. And these are the areas of muscles that you can concentrate on. Here we have the front view. There is a side view and a back view. All right, so I want to work on my abs, so I just okay, let's click go back, on the abs. Let's go back to the front view, and we will uh, isolate on that. Uh -huh. and we have a young lady that's going to show us the abdominal crunch floor. All right, so this is one of the abdominal exercises I could do, and we've got, okay, let's see this. Abdominal crunches on floor. This exercise primarily works the abdominals and obliques, so got full especially when twisting the torso really during the movement. How to safely do this these is an excellent isolation. Safety is important to uh, observe in this uh, program. Yes. Okay, and there was a whole long list of different abdominal exercises M I could have done. Many that. of them. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about the other side of the equation, which is diet. Suppose yeah. I'm doing my exercises, but I'm eating junk food, and I want to check and see if it's bad for me. And uh, I eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches late at night, and somebody told me peanut butter was bad, so. Could I go to the program and sort of check that out? We all do. We'll <laughs> go to the, the uh, seafood uh, database. Uh, seafood. Seafood. Oh, <laughs> food I'm database, sorry. that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will scroll down. As you know, uh, f Lifestyle has 5,300 different foods in this. Uh -huh. Now let's find so uh, grab, nuts. Grab nuts there. And, and then we will go there. over here to scroll down to peanut butter. We okay. have Skippy Low Fat. All right. Now we can view the nutrients. Here you see the calories, protein, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. uh, and all the vitamins. We can also show you the graph of nutrients, uh -huh. the graph of calories, wow. and there's also a pie chart. And look at that. You picked low-fat peanut yeah. butter, and it's got nothing but fat in it, huh? Excellent. No point in doing exercises right. and eating right. a lot of peanut butter. Yes. Thanks a lot, bud. Right. All right, one way to stay healthy and keep your health care costs down is to find out that you have a medical problem 
at the earliest possible moment. PCs can help there too with new home diagnostic tools like Dynapulse. This is your baby Andy. And with this thing, you can take your blood pressure at home using your PC, is that it? That's correct. And why would I want to take my blood pressure at home? Well, to control any type of hypertensive condition, you do need to monitor your blood pressure frequently. Uh, the Dynapulse allows you to, to take the blood pressure measurements and then also keep records of the blood pressure measurements over time so that you can supply the information to your physician. All right, so show me the software interface first, Andy. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and select a user first, in this case, uh, you, mm -hmm. and we'll go ahead and take a measurement. We click on Measure and Start, and this will bring up a graphic showing the proper cuff placement. All right, so it's sort of easy to figure out how to do this. Well, you'll, you'll help me since I haven't read the manual sure. yet here, Andy. You just oh. slide that over your arm okay. and fasten the Velcro. And then just rest your arm and, and okay. relax. Relax, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll click on OK, okay. and it tells us to close the air valve. Mm -hmm. And we, once again, we click OK and go ahead and pump up the cuff. And how do you know when to stop pumping? When I scream, or <laughs> it'll it'll tell us when to stop pumping. Okay, I and the computer see. also beeps. Now this is a real-time display of the blood pressure. You can actually see your heart beating yeah. on the screen there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it'll tell you when to start and stop. And, and right. It bleeds point. automatically and uh -huh. then tells us to release the remaining pressure. Okay, so it says release air. And the measurement results appear on the screen. Okay, so I was, what, 141 over 86 is the way you'd say that, right? That's correct. Now, how do I know what these numbers mean, Andy? Is this good? Is this bad? Do I run to the doctor right away and panic, or what? Well, we have a medical facts section. You can take a quick look here. It shows the various levels of hypertension, normal, high normal, uh, all the way okay. up to very so severe hypertension. I was sort hypertension. of high normal, maybe a little bit of mild hypertension there doing this show here. Right. right? Okay. Now, you, you mentioned that you showed me the trend section before. What, what is that? Okay, the trend, we'll click on Windows and Trend, and this brings up a long-term graph of your blood pressure over a period of time. It shows the systolic measurements in red, mm -hmm. mean blood pressure in yellow, and the diastolic in blue. Heart rate is down here in beats per minute. Now, could I take this stuff and actually print it out and then bring it with me when I go to the doctor and say, look, I've been checking my blood pressure in here? That's right? kind of the idea. You can print out any of either the measurement or the trend screens. There's also a columnar report mm -hmm. you can print out, uh, which shows the information in a, in a tabular yeah. format. Now, is this real accurate? I mean, is this the same as what the nurse would do if I went to the doctor's office? It is a very accurate system. It's FDA registered, and it is a clinical grade device. So you can't count on the mm -hmm. accuracy. How does it compare to those things you see in the catalogs where you put them on your finger and you take your blood pressure off your finger? Well, those are, are actually very notorious for, for poor accuracy. Really? The Dynapulse does a very good job. Uh -huh. And how much does it cost to get this thing and the software and all that? 139 mm -hmm. uh, includes the cuff, the measurement unit, everything that you need with the exception yeah. of uh, four AAA batteries. All right, not too bad. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thank you. All right, computers may be part of the healthcare solution, but sometimes they are also part of the problem. One of the most common and costly illnesses these days is RSI, repetitive strain injury, often found among people who spend a lot of time at computers. But now there is software that can help you prevent RSI. A computer comes equipped with input and output devices such as a screen and a keyboard. What it doesn't offer is a way to keep computer users from developing work-related ailments after using those devices. Stretcher Size from Prescribe is a software window designed to force typists and mousers to stop and exercise at regular intervals. The doctor who developed the program did it out of frustration with his patients. I would treat my patients, we'd invest a lot of time and effort together, get them better, have them go back to work, and see them back in six months with recurrent problems because they were unable to modify their work habits. So it occurred to me that if you're working in front of a computer, the computer can help ensure compliance with a therapeutic program, but more importantly, be a preventative care tool. Arthur Coleman, an executive at iCubed Corporation, is a PC user whose recurring pains and numbness sent him to Dr. Gambert. Stretcher size is part of his therapy, a way to force him to remember the need to take a break. 
Number one, a doctor can tell you what to do, but you don't necessarily do it. Secondly, because I get focused on my work, I forget to do the exercises. This software allows me not to worry about it, that I know that I'm going to get reminded no matter what I'm doing, it's going to interrupt me. And third, it's customizable, meaning I can set it to interrupt me if I'm doing word processing. I can have it interrupt me when I'm typing based on so many keystrokes. When I'm doing graphics work, it can interrupt me so many mouse clicks. And when I'm on the phone, I can just set it for a certain period of time so that even when I'm on the phone, it stops me to do the right exercises to have me avoid injuring myself. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Medical software for the home can do two things, as we've seen. It can save unnecessary and expensive trips to the doctor. It can also alert you to those times when it is urgent that you get to a doctor. One of the best examples is the new edition of the Family Doctor CD-ROM. And, Tony, you're going to show it to us. This is really a very impressive interface because it doesn't feel like you're in a computer. It's kind of a role-playing game. And I'm the patient. I'm in the doctor's office. Exactly. The, in, the interface is intuitive, so it's both easy to learn, which then makes the product easy to use. So, I mean, I, I walk into the office. You've got a real-time clockwork in there. And right. you've got a nurse to greet me. And if I click on the nurse, she talks to me, right? She says hello and welcomes you to the Family Doctor. Hello. Welcome to the family doctor offices. I'm Nurse Lorraine Francis. The doctor and I... All right, so I can walk into those different rooms I take it and find what I need? Exactly. If you were to walk into the library, for example, you see the entire contents in the family doctor product. You'll see there are eight books here, ranging from the National Safety Council's First Aid Handbook to the Random House Medical Dictionary. The entire contents of these books are in our one disc. If mm -hmm. you went out and bought these books individually, they'd cost you approximately $200. It's a lot and cheaper buying the software. Yeah, you can buy the software for $49.95. Okay, and you've got the drug guide there and all, all kinds of stuff. A lot so of Give me an example of the things I could look up here. Well, let's say you wanted to... I was playing basketball two weeks ago and hurt my foot. So uh -huh. let's say I wanted to look up something on my foot. Mm -hmm. I just clicked on the computer to bring up the search screen, typed in foot, and here comes the contents or the results of the search. What's interesting here is that you'll see the results are sorted by the title of the book. So if I'm interested in first aid, I can quickly get at that information uh -huh. rather than were, scrolling through the whole. And there were how many hits in each of the books that's in there? Well, the there were 68 there, huh? plus yeah. 19 and 10. So cool. there's a lot of information here. All right, so let's go into the other rooms. Absolutely. Look at all of that. So here, you see we have an arrow pointing us back to the waiting room. Uh -huh. We go into the exam room where we can learn about the human body by simply clicking on a model here. Mm -hmm. We can actually engage our doctor in an interactive diagnosis diagnostic session. And here the old style mortar and pestle where you can actually look at the USPC drug guide. Uh -huh. And here we can type in information on prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, as well as generic drugs. So it lists these drugs, I can just click on one and find yeah. out what it does for me and what exactly. the side effects might be. Right, let's something. say we're interested in amlodipine, which is used to treat high blood pressure. Uh -huh. Well, you'll see here we have a picture of the pills. We have description, as you mentioned, what to do before taking the medication, proper use, yeah. precautions, side effects. So really with this information, a person can feel confident that he or she is taking their medication okay. Let's safely. Let's check out that other room in the first aid room. Yeah, the first aid room. Here the National Safety Council has provided information that you can use in case of an emergency. So you really learn some life-saving techniques. So these here. are actually videos which I can play? Videos you play, uh, you pop them into the television. All right, I want you to go back to the exam room. That's one of the really cool parts of this is you can actually talk to the doctor as if you went to a real doctor. Exactly. So, I mean, let's engage the doctor here, and, and I want to sure. talk to him about a problem. Absolutely. I'm Dr. Nakamura. Well, it looks like you haven't been here in a while. I hope you're exactly. feeling all right. So, well, so now we can actually clip, click on his clipboard uh -huh. and engage in the self-diagnosis that we described. What can will come up is a picture of the body, and you just tell him where it hurts. All right, so I say my toe is bothering you, doctor. Okay. So we click on the toe, and then up comes some questions that you need to answer. First, tell me. Which of these problems do you have? Hmm. Just choose a symptom that you have, or choose one that is most or closely associated with Let's say the third one, I have altered rate. sensation in my toes. Okay. Highlight it, click OK, and up come the series of questions. For me to diagnose your ailment, now I need to ask you a series of questions. Simply answer yes or no. Let's begin. Okay, let's say no to that one. That's not true. Sure. I know I'm not diabetic. The next I'd question. Say no to that one. Uh, yeah, I'd say a little bit. That might be true. Okay, so let's so say let's yes. Say yes. Your symptoms are consistent with this condition. Hmm. So you can see we really do get a yeah, pretty good yeah, diagnosis. Yeah, I better go to the doctor and check <laughs> that out then. All right, right. that's very, very yeah, nice. That that's called the Family Doctor. The Family Doctor by so, Creative Multimedia. Thanks a lot. 
All right, one of the most important components of new PC-based healthcare is the vast amount of information and support you can find online. For a look at what's available on the Internet, let's check in on this week's Net News with Giles Bateman. Thanks, Stuart. I found several great health-related sites on the Internet. We'll start with Balance. This is sort of an online magazine, Balance Fitness on the Net. If we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise, not too little and not too much, we would have found the safest way to health. This quotation from Hippocrates pretty much sums up their entire approach, so that if we go to their uh, actually monthly edition, you'll find a whole lot of uh, articles about uh, nutrition, about exercise, all those sorts of things. Uh, there's also a forum for discussion and an email place. Now, the next place is Lifelines. And this contains a wide range of health-related information, everything from suggestions for health improvements to a newsletter, a physician's corner. One of the things I think is most useful about this site is they've got a great collection of links to other health-related sites, and it's very well organized. Uh, for instance, here we've got a table uh, containing links to everything from the American Heart Association to the chiropractic homepage. And last but not least, we have the World Health Organization, where you can find uh, uh, information about the Ebola virus outbreak, World Health Day. This is sort of like the NATO of health. But remember, when you're typing in the URL, to do the .ch instead of .com at the end, because they're in Geneva, Switzerland. Now time for our weekly summary of what's new in the field of personal computing. Let's go to Studio E for this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Apple Computer has unveiled its comeback strategy. CEO Gil Emilio announced that Apple will reduce the number of Mac models it sells. The company will concentrate on machines designed for interactive multimedia and the Internet. The Macintosh has long held a loyal following, but a recent Computer World survey found that 22% of Mac users are considering moving to other computers. Among recent problems for Apple are defective memory and clock chips freezing up some of its most popular models. The company has set up a program to provide free repairs at any time over the next seven years. Desktop machines will be repaired through dealers, while PowerBooks will need to be sent to a central repair facility. If you think you own a machine with a defective chip, call 800-SOSAPPL for more information. CompuServe and Netscape have joined forces to deliver a hosted intranet service with groupware functionality. CompuServe will maintain server farms based on Netscape technology where corporate customers will store their private applications. The Wall Street Journal has gone interactive. In addition to stories from the daily newspaper, the interactive edition adds breaking news coverage throughout the day. We keep it up to date throughout the day so that you have constantly updated pages of information within it, but it's got the editorial touch. The editors are there sort of organizing information and presenting it. Readers who register by the end of May will have free access through July. French National Police recently raided the headquarters of Internet service providers FranceNet and WorldNet. Police shut them down for providing access to Usenet where illegal pornographic images have been posted. Several other Internet providers in France cut access to Usenet for one week to show support for the busted providers. They hope their action will force the courts to decide the legal question on who is responsible for pornography on the net. Have you ever wondered where ideas for new TV shows come from? Ground Zero Production says its live-action CD-ROM game, Terror Tracks, has become the first interactive computer game to be picked up for development as a prime-time television series. The game and the TV series feature elite undercover police officers who battle against the forces of evil. That's it for this week's Random Access News. Back to you, Stuart. This week I'd like to show you a fascinating new problem-solving tool called Go Figure. This is basically a spreadsheet program, but it doesn't look like one. Up until now, if you wanted to use a spreadsheet to solve a problem, you had to squeeze your problem into spreadsheet format. That wasn't always real friendly or convenient to do. What Go Figure does is let you squeeze the spreadsheet to fit the nature of your problem. The program is really a virtually infinite collection of mini spreadsheets that you launch onto an electronic work pad called ePaper. You can connect any elements so the changes in any one part of the problem get reflected in the other parts of the problem. The program comes with a huge encyclopedia of formulas and gadgets that make it easy to structure a problem. For example, here I'm trying to figure out the materials I need to build a patio. It's a very clever program. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, GoFigure is pretty cool and quite unique. 
It comes from Villa Crespo Software, and it runs under Windows. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with another half hour of the latest in personal computer technology. I'm Stuart Chaffe. We'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Acer America, proud supporters of intelligent programming, computer or otherwise. Additional funding from the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com. <laughs>